Hello there and welcome to Kingdom of the Logos. I hope everyone's having a good time while everything is shut down here in the midst of the coronavirus. It really seems like we're in the middle of week one of Corona shutdown and everything is a little bit crazy as a direct result. We look at the world around us and a lot of people, they are in this place where they can't tell exactly how serious should we take this threat. I know many people are staying home. There are different things going on. People that have kids in school, all of that's been affected. And today when I was riding over to the church, I I noticed that there was a police officer standing in front of the the water heater factory. And as people were walking across the street, he was shaking their hands as things were going across. And that kind of puts in your mind how serious should I take this if, you know, the first responders, law enforcement, if the government itself isn't taking this serious, how should I believe them if they're telling me to take this serious? Well, nonetheless, that's why we are reminded of the fact that personal responsibility in being an adult is very important. Again, when we look throughout the history of the world, Christianity and our Lord Christ Jesus came to teach us something which was very unique, that you as an individual had a heart and mind that mattered and what was going on within your own moral code mattered. And that is is something which is just critical to how we operate. And where we're at right now as a society, it is certainly a time where we should have that personal responsibility. Um, don't just rely on others. Just make sure that you're you're living right. Make sure that you're right with God. Now is a good time to get right with God. And just in all things, make sure you are taking that personal responsibility. So today is St. Patrick's Day, and I hope everyone's having a wonderful St. Patrick's Day. I know I've been giving up sweets for Lent, but my mother brought home a, a St. Patrick's Day cake that looks absolutely delicious. When this Sunday comes around with feast day, I hope the cake is still there because... um. I know it sounds kind of nasty eating leftover cake or something like that, but I totally would. Um, it looked quite delicious, and I'm totally ready for some feast days. But when we look at the the world around us, we are reminded of the importance of gratitude. And on St. Patrick's Day, what a wonderful day for us to celebrate the gratitude that we can have as Christians. When we look throughout the history of the people of God, St. Patrick is one of those saints which is quite popular in pop culture, although a lot of people don't know it terribly lot about him. I have here with me, if I can keep from hitting the microphone, a little statue of St. Patrick. And when I'm in my normal seat in the studio, St. Patrick sits behind me. Um, Some of the markers that you can use to notice that it is St. Patrick, if you see different figurines of saints or whatnot, is St. Patrick is oftentimes depicted with snakes. Um, And this statue here, if maybe if I rotate it around, you can kind of see the snakes there on his base. Um, St. Patrick is known for driving the snakes out of Ireland. Whether or not that happened, we don't know. It's not really pertinent to the story of St. Patrick, but a lot of times you will see snakes with him. Often he's depicted green, of course, but sometimes he's actually depicted blue. Um, St. Patrick was originally depicted with with blue, but later that was changed to green because it was more humble, it was more earthy, and things of that nature. But one of the hallmarks of St. Patrick's life is that he had absolute gratitude. And right now, while we're in the middle of corona shutdown, a lot of people, they, they don't really know what's going on. And there's a lot of serious unknown going on here as far as people's jobs go. As far as, you know, what the economy is going to do, you know, what's going to happen to my savings, what's going to happen to the stock market. There's a lot of very serious questions that we have right now in the middle of this. But let's all just take a deep breath, remind ourselves that personal responsibility is very important. God wants us to be responsible and he wants us to recognize that he is on the throne. The coronavirus is not on the throne. God is on the throne. But on St. Patrick's Day, what a day to celebrate gratitude. You know, St. Patrick, he started off as a Roman Briton who was kidnapped and he was really, he grew up a slave in Ireland or he came into adulthood as a slave only to later be freed from that by a really just a message in the night tells him to get on a ship. He ends up going back to Ireland many, many years later through a lot of fascinating events where he becomes the bishop, mostly so the church can get rid of him um, and also say they're doing something about Ireland. It's kind of a win-win for situations that the church unfortunately deemed hopeless. But Patrick goes back, and he has an immense amount of gratitude. And I want to read something from one of St. Patrick's letters um, regarding how grateful he was, even in the midst of what we would consider absolute destitution. Um, Patrick writes, he says, I did not really know the true God when I was brought into slavery to Ireland, together with thousands of others. All of us deserved this slavery because we had turned away from God and did not keep his commandments. And Patrick goes on to say, I cannot be silent, nor would it be helpful about all the gifts and graces that the Lord in his mercy has bestowed on me in my land of slavery. 
Indeed, this is how we ought to behave. After being punished by God, we must praise him, and we must tell others of his marvels, of every nation under the heavens. So again, St. Patrick, in the midst of great tragedy, has gratitude, and that's something we all need. Right now, I know a lot of people, they're going to be spending a lot of time at home. Um, kind of the recommendation with this pandemic is not to be around a lot of people, but nonetheless, people are still going to be with their close-knit families. Again, they're not going to necessarily be with you know, a thousand people in their home because that's not how we live, but you might be at home with your, your family and those who are close with you. Now is a great time for us to appreciate the, the sheer gratitude we should have just with the breath of life. God has given us such a wonderful treasure. And even when we feel like we're being punished, even when we actually are being punished, again, um, God is the Father. And as he says, those whom I love, I reproach and discipline. Um, we have to afterwards go out and give praise to that. You know, right now is a time where a lot of people may be panicking and thinking they're about to lose a lot of things important to their livelihood. But at the same time, look at the wonderful treasures that we have. Um, this Saturday, I was um, actually with my grandmother and had not planned on being home that day. But with everything going on, I ended up being home that night. And, you know, the two of us, we put in the 1960 version of um, the Swiss Family Robinson. And, you know, it's just a priceless treasure to sit there and watch that movie. My grandmother was laughing at it. I was laughing at it, too. We were just having a great time together. And, you know, something like that is worth far more than, than we oftentimes take for granted. Um, St. Patrick, he was one who quite fervently knew the cost of salvation. Um, and he also understood that the world is a very serious place. Um, God's salvation and his grace is not something which is cheap, which you enjoy on Sundays or here and there on occasion, but it's something which we should actually appreciate on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's serious enough that you should appreciate it even in slavery because, as Patrick kind of conveys throughout his writings, even being a slave is not enough to pay back your sins. Um, nothing could ever bring you salvation. There's no amount of restitution or retribution you could engage in here on this earth to ever pay that back. But yet God did that for us. He sent his son. He had compassion for us just as a father has for his son, and that's a beautiful thing. Well, in the middle of Corona Crazy, while everything is shut down, we are reminded um, that, that life itself is fragile. And one of the lessons that I've really noticed here lately is that so many of us had gotten comfortable in the world and we thought that we could really sanitize our world. And you've seen this going on for quite a while ideologically. And one of the things that I'm just interested in in this, this time of Corona shutdown, again, here I am at church. I'm the only one here at the church right now. Um, they do let me go home on occasion. But as we're all in Corona shutdown, one of the things which I think we're going to learn very quickly is what things do our society hold in serious regard and what things in our society do we hold in only kind of playful it's just for a show you know we talk about a lot of stuff a lot of people get out and virtue signal for different causes um, we have all sorts of madness that goes on in our culture where people want to engage in all sorts of crazy stuff they want to mutilate themselves they they want to tell other people what is normal they want to really take young people and say there should be no rules in life. We kind of have 30 years later version of the, the sexual revolution or 40, 50 years, however many we are now. And one of the things that happens in the midst of a pandemic is we start to understand what really matters. Um, what is actually healthy enough which can sustain a family through the midst of trials? What gives us the strength to persevere? And as a pastor, when I look at this, I realize that you look somewhere like 9-11, a lot of people were really interested in the church because they just saw something dramatic. There was a lot of fear that was going through society, and they wanted an answer for that, and so they went to church. We as the church, we have to, to correctly teach people that Christianity is not about just avoiding something dangerous or avoiding conflict, but it's about how you persevere through it. In the Sunday message that I gave last week, I emphasized that the gospel, it was not an exercise in passivity. It was not this grand show where Jesus came to, to be cute and come up to people and say, well, you know, they condemned you because they caught you in adultery, and that's okay, you can stay in your adultery. That's not at all what Jesus does. Um, Jesus does not come to people and validate their sin and say their sin is good. In fact, he comes and tells people, go and sin no more. When Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, he leaves the garden knowing that he is going to be taking on death, and he's going to really die. But nonetheless, he does it. The gospel 
it was an exercise in victory. It was a conquest that was larger than our earthly conquest. And we as Christians, we must have that mentality. When the world wants us to be fearful, when the world wants us to be on shutdown, we have to be righteous people who are willing to stand up, who are willing to have that righteous conviction to, to say we're not organizing our lives around fear, but instead on something that is righteous. This is what St. Patrick did. You know, he went straight back to Ireland, which is the death sentence. If you're an escaped slave, you know, that's pretty much universally true. And not only does he go back to Ireland, but he actually tries to seek out the people that he was with so he could minister to them because he loved them. He realized that he was a sinner and that just because he had been a slave, that didn't mean he should shy away from the gospel. He had been a sinner. He needed salvation. These people who had kept him in slavery, they needed salvation. And Patrick goes back with that firm conviction where he knows He's probably going to die for doing this, but nonetheless, he carries on with it. One of the things which will also come up with the midst of the coronavirus is people will have to work out what actually is the God of their life. Now, I know I've said several times that God is on the throne, the coronavirus is not on the throne. But one of the, the traps that we've had set for us in our culture is this idea that if you can say that something is done in the name of safety, then everybody kind of has to bow down to it. Now, in Christianity, we know that the righteous path is a straight and narrow path, that you can be pulled to either side, you can veer to either side, you can be attacked from either side. It's it's a straight and narrow path. But here in the, the West, where we've tried to sanitize things and tried to remove God as the source of morality, we've had other things try to fill the gap. And of course, one of those has been the name of safety, where the purpose of life is to avoid suffering, which is, again, not Christian, and it's also impossible to do. But one of the things we're going to have to sort out is how much are we going to be willing to give up in the name of safety? Because safety and safety measures, you know, OSHA is not on the throne. God is on the throne. And I think with everything going on with the corona shutdown, it is going to put us in a position where we have to figure all of that out. So one of the scriptures that's been on my mind, and I've heard a lot of people use in this last week, is the pretty much the whole chapter of 2 Corinthians 4. And as I've been thinking about the coronavirus, I've been thinking about St. Patrick. Um, I was reading through 2 Corinthians, and um, Anthony, who's normally here with us, he gave me a Greek interlinear, um, Greek English interlinear, which I've got a few of those, but this new one he got me, you know, it's kind of new, and you, you enjoy something um, and spend a lot of time with it, and I've been carrying it around. And I was reading through 2 Corinthians chapter 4 in this, and the fourth verse of this is absolutely fascinating. We here at Kingdom of the Logos have been talking a lot about the spirit of the age and how just the general idolatry that goes on in the world, the secular religions that don't necessarily have a name. But 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 reads, and this is my own translation of the Greek, The God of the age has blinded the minds of unbelievers to negate the beaming illumination of the good news of the divine presence of Christ who is the image of God. And I want to read that again. This is 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. The God of the age has blinded the minds of unbelievers to negate the beaming illumination of the good news of the divine presence of Christ, who is the image of God. Now, most times when you read this translated, it's going to say the, the God of the world or something like that, but the text actually has the word in there where we get the English eon, the aeon, um, the God of the age. You know, whatever, you're not exempt from this. Whatever spirit is controlling your culture, the God of your culture, the God of your Hollywood, the God of whatever is giving you your entertainment, your stories, your narratives, that God is trying to blind the minds of unbelievers. And when I look at the world around us, the coronavirus, you know, it can be one of those things that tries to blind the minds of unbelievers, to bring people in a place where they get depressed, where they just take a nihilistic perspective of the world and they lack aspirations. Um, and the whole goal of the God of the age in this text is to negate the beaming illumination, that there's good news. You know, don't be depressed. The gospel is aspirational. Of course, gospel is good news, those um those words are one and the same, and it's here for the glory, the divine presence of Christ, who is the image of God. So we as Christians, we should not be depressed. Um, we should be illuminating the gospel of Christ Jesus in the midst of this world where a lot of people are depressed. And it's St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick was grateful even as a slave and even grateful for slavery, that he could pay a little penance even though he knew that wasn't enough for salvation. Today, we should spend time in our homes with our families, with our loved ones. Again, we're not supposed to be really congregating in mass, but we're still going to be at home with our nuclear family, however that may be. I know I'm going to go home and spend some time with my dog um, and maybe some other relatives I might see or something like that. But 
probably not a lot of them. Again, we're not doing a lot of traveling and stuff. We're still having church services here at Jolton Church of the Nazarene where I pastor. Um, we're not touching one another while we're here, and we're keeping the church clean. We're sanitizing stuff, and we're kind of keeping our distance, but we're still here. Again, God is on the throne, not the coronavirus. But as we spend our time, we must be grateful. Grateful even to be in the midst of what appears to be a calamity, um, and we have to find that straight and narrow road. We have to be assertive. We don't necessarily need to start dressing like the characters from Mad Max 2, the road warrior. Um, as appealing as that is to to do that, and of course I have a blue healer, it's very appealing to, to do that. But nonetheless, we have to be righteous. We have to live righteously. We must use this as a time to be grateful and to share the gospel with others. So with that, we're going to wrap up this live stream. If anybody has any thought, qu- thoughts or questions about St. Patrick, send them to me. And let's close with a prayer for everyone that's affected with the coronavirus right now and everything going on in the world. So let's pray. A gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful opportunity we have to be your people. Lord, I pray for those who are out listening to this, those who are in their homes, whether they're a place of work or whether wherever they may be hearing this. Lord, I just pray that you would be with us. Let us remember that you are on the throne. Let us not have any faults that, that distract us, Lord. We ask that you send your, your Holy Spirit to convict us, to, to reveal the, the sins in our hearts, that we could confess them to you, that we don't let anything creep in our life. All those fissures and faults that want to come across our, our lives, Lord, they want to distract us and keep us from looking to you. Lord, I just pray that you will give us the firm conviction that we will keep our eyes on you and your illuminating God gospel during this time. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. But with that, we thank you for joining us. Um, God love you and have a blessed day.